The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michelle Hebert, Director of Communications here at Saney's, and I want to welcome you to another Lunch and Learn in our ongoing Financial Friday series. Saney's is excited to offer these sessions in cooperation with our corporate partner, AXA. AXA has a longstanding presence in New York, and a large portion of AXA's New York client base is built upon the work they do within the public education system. Through AXA, Saney's members can receive competitive insurance rates and a full array of retirement services, including a complimentary financial profile for Saney's members. We urge you to take advantage of that benefit. It's it's a great benefit we get from our AXA partner. Our AXA presenter today is Greg Gvorsky, advisor and vice president from the Capital District Office. Before we get started, please note that participants are muted during the session, but we will have time for Q&A at the end. So just type your question in your question panel there. Uh, it should be to the right in your controls. And we'll record the session and we'll send you a copy of that also and post it on sanius.org. So you'll have plenty of time to go back and review. So with that, I'll turn it over to Greg. Thank you very much, Michelle, and thank you everybody for joining. So it's very strategic that we do a retirement planning financial Friday in the beginning of the school year and then one at the end. As you can probably imagine, that's usually when we get a lot of questions and a lot of a lot of good turnout for these. So thank you for attending. So just to go through the agenda quick, what we're gonna do today is go through a New York State TRS pension benefit overview, talk about a few of the decisions that will be determined at the point of retirement, and then the ways to maximize uh, your pension benefits and what you're eligible for and entitled to through New York State. My disclaimer will be that this is a lot of information to cover in a fairly short amount of time. So really where we provide a lot of additional benefit and additional value is meeting one-on-one -on -one with either our administrator groups that are saying these members, or uh, even with our individual clients and their spouses to help determine what makes the most sense with all the different variables and all the different moving parts of what you're entitled to through your TRS benefits. So first off, let me start by saying thank you for one, the partnership that we have with Saney's and also the partnership that we have with all of the Saney's administrators groups across New York State. So from Long Island to Plattsburgh to Western New York and Buffalo and the Southern Tier, we cover a lot of ground, but we have local offices that are available to provide additional value in a number of different ways. And again, some of those ways are providing administrator group support. So all of you as individual members of your administrator groups we're available to do educational presentations. We're available for superintendent's days and even to help with some things like the contract negotiation guidance and providing recommendations, depending on what those benefits are and how those contracts are currently structured, new ways to incorporate additional value and additional benefits that you could be entitled to through the district. Um, we also help on the personal side. And again, that's where we assist a lot of our New York State administrators with pension benefits and survivor option analysis, going through social security benefits, looking at what expectations are for all of these different retirement income sources, how all of these different moving parts really come back into the financial picture, and also helping with things like 403Bs and any supplemental retirement savings that might be either through the district or outside of the district as well. Um, a quick reference, so we are actually the largest provider of 403B supplemental retirement plans in New York State. So again, we have a lot of experience, but our service really goes beyond just setting up 403Bs and saying good luck along the way, we'll meet you at retirement. It's really taking all of these different stepping stones in stride to make sure that things like the 403B, things like pension estimates, things like social security benefits are all really working in the same cohesive way to benefit what those expectations are come retirement. So again, we, we truly want to say thank you for the continued support and partnership. So to jump into a few of the New York State pension benefits and an overview there. So there's been a lot of questions and a lot of media commentary the last number of years talking about the position of state benefits and state pension systems. New York State's teachers retirement system pension benefits continue to be one of the best funded pension programs in the US. So 
really what the premise behind the pension is, is it's designed to provide guaranteed lifetime income. Now, guaranteed is in quotes. There are some things that could potentially change in the future, but there's no expectation that we have, and there's no anticipation that um, that those monthly expectations would be any different than what those entitlements look like today. The New York State pension is typically the largest source of retirement income for our TRS members. And really what the primary benefit is, is that it provides consistency and peace of mind in a degree of stability in that overall retirement financial picture, because we're not necessarily worried about what the stock market is doing on a month to month or a year to year basis for that retirement income. Again, your New York State TRS pension benefits are outside of anything dealing with the stock market. And again, making sure that um, that some of those different income sources are all working in the same fashion together. All right. As far as how the New York State pension is calculated, there's three different what are called pension factors. The first factor is our age at retirement. And New York State has a couple of stipulations, one being age 55. If somebody is age 55 and they have 30 or more years of service with New York State, they are able to retire without any penalty on their benefits. If someone's going to retire without 30 years of service, then age 62 becomes the new requirement to not have a penalty. All right. So there are a couple of different factors there that are, are big determining factors. We'll go over what the penalties look like, but the challenge is if we retire before age 62 with less than 30 years of service, there are some pretty substantial permanent penalties that are taken away from those expected monthly benefits every single month. So it is something where, again, we look at maximizing what those future benefits are. We want to make sure that our, our clients and our SANES members are taking full advantage of what they're entitled to. The second pension factor are, is the total years of service at retirement based on how long somebody has in the New York State system, that determines what percentage of their salary they're going to get every year for the rest of their life. Now that percentage is based on a calculation of what New York State considers the final average salary. Now the final average salary is where most people think that it's the last three years of employment, but it's actually the three highest consecutive years. There are a few wrinkles inside of the New York State pension uh, benefits that one of those three years in the last three cannot be more than 10% than any other year. So there are instances where clients try to add some of their final average salary benefits and it's actually a hindrance because that year could potentially get thrown out and now a year that that is previous that still falls within those 10 percent guidelines has to be reconsidered so again it is something where as we get closer to these milestones we do want to have a very strong understanding for what those different pension factors are going to look like and again providing that guidance to our clients to make sure that they maximize what their benefits can be as far as the challenges behind the new york state pension benefits as great as the benefits are, as much consistency and as much peace of mind as they provide, there are a few different things that we want to make sure our clients are aware of. The first is the inflexibility in retirement. So these benefits are really set in stone after 30 days of retirement. We can't go back and change any of the options that we took. We can't add or, or delete any of the beneficiaries that we listed. Um, 30 days into retirement, those decisions are really set in stone. So it is a pretty finite amount of time that we need to make sure that we have the right recommendations and that we implement the correct appropriate strategies for whatever our clients needs are. There's also a very, very low cost of living increase. So depending on when somebody retires and what age they retire at, that determines when they will become eligible for cost of living increases. Generally, it's five to 10 years after retirement is when somebody becomes eligible for their first cost of living increase. Again, disclaimer, the increases are very, very small. On a 
large scale, um, just to give everybody an idea, the minimum, once someone's eligible for a cost of living increase, the minimum increase is $15 per month every year once somebody's eligible. The absolute maximum increase is $45 per month once somebody is eligible. So again, there's not a very large increase from a dollar standpoint. And unfortunately, those cost of living increases don't generally keep up with, um, with inflation and the cost of retirement getting a little bit more expensive every single year. Depending on what the beneficiary or potential spousal needs are, um, there are also reductions that somebody can experience in the event that they leave their pension or a part of their pension to a beneficiary or a surviving spouse or significant other. Um, again, having some of those decisions made and having an understanding of what some of those repercussions are is beneficial leading into retirement. It's a little bit more difficult to plan for with less time or if we speak to a client who might be looking to retire at the end of this school year or anything like that. So advanced planning, um, the more time we have, the more prepared we can be for some of those things. Um, this is a not very well known fact, but there actually, unfortunately, is no pension if a New York State employee passes away before they reach retirement. There is a three times salary in service death benefit that is tied to um, your benefits in the state education system but there is not a monthly income that a beneficiary will receive if you don't make it to retirement. Again, few ways to plan around that, but again, something we want to make sure our clients are aware of. And then finally, the permanent reduction, if we retire before those milestones are hit, so the 30 years of service or age 62, um, if those are not hit, again, we could potentially have almost a 30% reduction in what the entitled benefit is if somebody retires before those before those two milestones. So all things that we wanna take into consideration, quite frankly, we need to take those into consideration to meet our clients' retirement income goals and expectations. These are all the different moving parts of what we wanna look at, again, in conjunction with anything else that might be relevant to that financial household. So to give everybody an idea, there's a number of different options that New York State allows. And if we take the example here where we have a, a New York State employee who's age 60, a spouse who's age 56, 30 years of service and a $100,000 final average salary, the single life option that someone's entitled to, which continues for the rest of their life, but does not provide any benefit to a beneficiary would be $60,000 per year. In this case, if somebody wanted to make sure that their spouse or significant other were going to be um, were going to be able to continue that that monthly income, it, the joint allowance option here would be about a seven thousand dollar reduction in what the pension benefit is, and that would continue as long as one person was alive, either the New York State employee or the beneficiary. The 75% joint allowance option means that 75% of the pension benefit would be received in the event that the New York State employee died. Half would the half option or the 50% option means half of that benefit would be continued, and so on. The five and 10 year period certain mean that for a definitive five or 10 years, your pension is is guaranteed to be paid to at least you or a beneficiary but at the end of that five or 10 year period, the pension uh, stops if it's being paid to a beneficiary. As long as a New York State employee is still alive, the pension will continue. The final option here is generally the option that we compare these two the most. And the reason is, is because most times we need this pension benefit to continue for both sides of the household. The pop-up option in an inflexible system allows some additional flexibility. The way that the pop-up option works is you can see that we still have about a seven, almost $8,000 reduction in what our annual pension benefit is. But if something happens to that New York State employee, 
that pop-up full option would continue $52,380 per year to the spouse of that New York State employee. If something were to happen to the spouse, the New York State employee would then pop up back to their full single life amount. So they would get an increase of income of about seven or $8,000. Um, in this example, the reason that we generally look at this is one, because from a planning standpoint, it's the largest reduction that we can experience. So if we choose any other option, we know that we've increased our, our monthly and annual income. From the choice and flexibility side, if a New York State employee um, passes away, then we, again, need to make sure that spouses are still financially taken care of. With survivor benefits related to, to pensions and to Social Security, Social Security continues the higher of the two Social Security benefits to a surviving spouse. But what that means is one of those benefits or one of those monthly incomes is guaranteed to go away. So in an effort to make sure that our clients are not in a financially difficult position, this pop-up option can replace some of that lost income from the spouse's social security that again, would not be there anymore. All right, so a few things to consider, but again, wanna just go through a quick overview of what some of the terminology is and what some of the differences are. Um, depending on what someone's financial needs are and the needs of a financial household, that's where all of these different options can come into play. What makes the most sense is truly determined by whatever the needs are and the expectations and the goals of our clients. So as we look at the different decisions to make, with the single life pension options, the single life option truly, unfortunately, does not allow for any survivor benefits. So in this case, again, something happens to our New York State employee clients, their spouse or their beneficiary or significant other would not receive any distributions or any income from New York State. So the other alternative is to take a reduced pension benefit to make sure that that income can continue. Again, those two options are the joint allowance or the pop-up options. So with the single life pension benefit, the advantage is that that's the maximum that you're entitled to receive from New York State on that month to month basis. The downside again is if you out, if you predecease your spouse, your spouse is not going to get any income. All right, so again, depending on if that's a, a consideration or if we need to make sure that that income is continuing, there are strategies to achieve that. With the joint allowance option, um, again, the advantage is that our spouse is going to be protected right spouse is going to continue to uh, to receive income one way or the other the disadvantage is that you have to give up some of your anticipated pension to make sure that new york state can continue to provide that benefit regardless of who would pass away first in this case the joint allowance option would permanently reduce the total pension benefit the pop-up option, again, advantage is that our spouse is able to continue that monthly income stream. The disadvantage is that we are giving up some of our income. If the TRS employee passes away, the spouse, again, is going to continue to receive that pension at a lower reduced amount. Um, if the spouse passes away, the TRS employee pops back up to the single life pension. But for all of those years that the New York State employee and their spouse were living in retirement, they gave up potentially five, seven, ten thousand dollars of annual income that there's no reimbursement for. So again, as we look at some of these different options here, it's a very, very big um, important consideration because again, 30 days after retirement, we don't have the ability to change any of these outcomes. So regardless of any family changes or marital status or any um, future needs or, or anything like that, we are really locked into the decision that we made at retirement. So we need to make sure that as we are leading up to that point, we have all of those different nuances and all those different potential scenarios figured out to make sure that we're making the appropriate selection so you can maximize what you're entitled to. 
So another consideration is something called pension maximization. And this is where it's a strategy that we do a lot of, um, a lot of these workshops and seminars with TRS and with the, the employee's retirement system. And actually in the employee's handbook, um, in the employee's retirement handbook, there is something that talks about exploring options outside of what New York State actually offers. So one of the options to consider is a way to maximize your pension benefits, but also making sure that you can help provide financial stability in the event that something happens to either the New York State employee or a spouse at some point throughout retirement. There's also ways to use existing savings to supplement the other sources of retirement income. So just to go through a quick example here, let's say that we had a $5,000 a month pension while somebody, while the New York State employee was living with that single life option, our New York State employee passes away. Unfortunately, there's nothing that's going to continue to be paid out to a survivor. With the survivorship option, again, we might have a $600 a month reduction in our pension to provide a 50% benefit. So $4,400 a month while that New York State employee was living, our TRS employee unfortunately passes away. $2,200 would continue from New York State to the spouse for the rest of their life. That is still taxable at the spouse's ordinary income rates. Another consideration to look at is supplementing that single life pension with a personal life insurance strategy. The way that that strategy would work is that by collecting that $5,000 a month, we've now selected the highest annual income that you're entitled to through your New York State benefits. So while both are living, we're now collecting the maximum benefit. If that by supplementing that with life insurance, and that's where we would have life insurance premiums that, that would be coming out of that maximum benefit, but the mindset is to reduce the cost of the life insurance as much as we can while protecting the spouse to make sure that they're going to be able to receive the same income that they would have received from New York State. So if our TRS employee passes away, nothing from New York State would be paid to the spouse, but there can be a lump sum tax-free death benefit that can go to a spouse or to children. The proceeds from that death benefit would then generate income, which would replace what that spouse or the children were currently receiving from New York State. There's a lot of different ways to position this and to, um, to put this in place. But again, these are a lot of the personal conversations we have. On the other side of the coin, if the spouse passes away, where we would lose all flexibility and all choice with New York State, with the life insurance strategy, we have the ability to change beneficiaries. We also have the ability to reduce or eliminate the, the life insurance premiums, where just like the pop-up option, we're now already collecting our single life pension benefit without having any life insurance premiums that are, are supplementing the family needs. If the spouse passes away, that New York State employee also has the ability to surrender the life insurance policy and receive potential cash value from it. So again, where New York State doesn't provide any reimbursement for some of those lost years of pension income, this is something where if that's the solution or if that's the decision of the New York State employee to cancel their life insurance, if it's structured a certain way, there is the potential to receive that cash value from those policies. Again, as a form of reimbursement for giving up years of, uh, of some potential pension income. So from this example, the advantages of the pension maximization is that our New York State SANES members are collecting the largest pension benefits that they're entitled to while they're alive. If a spouse passes away first, we can again make one of those decisions to then determine what makes the most sense going forward. Um, we retain control as a beneficiary to distribute the income from the death benefit proceeds where instead of being regimented to collecting a monthly check from New York State, there's additional flexibility to take more or take less or potentially reposition these assets so they can be used as a 
legacy tool to provide um, a legacy to children or uh, charities or, or anything along those lines. Um, there's a number of different ways that these can be structured, but again, not to belabor the points of the advantages, not to say that this is for everybody. There's always um, considerations regarding the wealth of our clients and what the where different assets may be positioned, but also from a health standpoint, there has to be health considerations in incorporating a life insurance strategy into that pension plan. All right, but ultimately that pension maximization strategy is designed to provide the same flexibility and control that we would want to make sure stays in force with um, where with New York State, we lose some of the flexibility and some of the choice around what happens in the future if something happens to myself or my spouse. So again, with all of the different considerations there, there's a lot of things that go into that, whether it's the financial situation, again, personal health, financial objectives, or the options that we have under the New York State plan, there are certainly um, a lot of different moving parts to consider in these strategies, but this is where the more time we have on our side, the more we can prepare for and plan for these different circumstances. With the New York State Teachers Retirement System, in the um, retirement handbook, there's some considerations and recommendations to for, for when to start planning for some of these events. And unfortunately, this is where we have a, a difference of opinion on when the planning process should really begin. But um, New York State really recommends that 18 months before the expected retirement, we ask for an estimate. We think that that's a, a pretty close to that final milestone. 12 months before retirement, we should educate ourselves about all of the pre-retirement issues that we should consider. Again, um, a lot of different moving parts there. Eight months before retirement, we should review our income sources, whether that's social security, distributions from 403Bs, IRAs, Roth IRAs, anything like that. Again, getting very close to the finish line. Six months before retirement, review a retirement budget. Probably too close to, uh, to really make any relative changes there. Four months before, review our health insurance. And then in the final couple of months, that's when we should really um, be taking the final steps. Our anticipation working with our clients is these months from the TRS recommendations could really be considered years. So about 18 years before retirement, we should start looking at what our estimates are. What can we expect to have down the road? 12 years before retirement, we should start to consider the issues that we'll be faced with come retirement. What options should I choose? When should I start collecting Social Security? Is there going to be part-time work in retirement? All of these different factors are considerations to uh, to take into to effect. Again, eight years before retirement, let's look at our other retirement sources, our, our other retirement income sources. What can we expect to have from these different sources? What can we expect to withdraw from our retirement accounts? What can we expect from Social Security given different ages? Um, Again, incorporating spousal benefits into here. The work that we do is not just geared towards our, our TRS um, clients or our SANES members. It's really incorporating anything that's part of the financial household, anything that our, our client's spouses may be entitled to with 401ks or pensions through their employers, anything like that. So Again, the, the earlier that we begin looking at some of these options, the more planning we can do. But we think it's equally important for our clients to understand what those future benefit expectations are today. We can implement these different strategies when the timing is right, but the more time that we have, the higher chance of financial success we have because we've given ourselves more, more uh, time to plan. So in closing, again, I'll just reiterate, thank you very much for the continued support and partnership. Um, we look forward to seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of our SANES members at the annual conference coming up in just a couple of weeks. I'll leave this on the screen as we go through questions. So if you do have any personal questions or, or wanna sit down um, with a local representative, we cover all of the different regions of SANES. We have local representatives in all these different offices. So again, we can coordinate any of that going forward. But um, at this point, we'll open it up for questions. And again, thank you very much for your support and partnership.
Thanks, Greg. Um, so we do have a question, and that is, what defines a significant other? What if you are single? Can an adult child be a pension re recipient? Good question. So New York State, with the joint allowance and the pop-up options, New York State will allow somebody to select one beneficiary. So if there's multiple children that you'd like to leave the pension benefits behind to, unfortunately, New York State won't allow you to do that. With uh, the New York State pension, the difference between the single life option, the joint allowance, and the pop-up is contingent on the beneficiary's date of birth. So the younger a potential beneficiary is, the longer New York State would anticipate having to pay out benefits. So the larger reduction there is in uh, in those annual or monthly pension benefits. The um, Using that example, if we were to name a minor child as the beneficiary, we'd probably look at going from a $60,000 single life pension to maybe a fifty or $45,000 um, survivor option. So there can be a pretty significant loss of income. In looking at those options, that's where the life insurance strategy is usually much more cost effective because we can have an individual life policy, take that single life option, knowing that we can change beneficiaries or update beneficiaries at any point. And with that life insurance policy, it's not generally not going to cost as much as the decrease in pension benefits that New York State would have. Okay, uh, we have another question. What taxes come out of pensions? So security tax, Medicare, federal and state income taxes? Any of those? Great question again. So with the New York State pension, the only deduction, and this is where the New York State pension ends up being maybe a little bit more of a replacement than some people consider, um, the only thing coming out of the New York State pension as far as taxes go are federal income taxes. There's a big asterisk next to that because that's if somebody stays in New York State. If someone stays as a New York State resident, they don't pay any New York State income taxes on their New York State pension. If there's a relocation where somebody moves out of state and now has a new primary state of residence, depending on those state tax laws, the New York State pension could become taxable. Okay, any other questions today? Give me a minute if anyone needs to type something in. Okay, well, as a reminder, we are recording this session and it will be sent out to all registrants to the webinar and we'll post it to sanies.org. And as you see here, Greg has posted all the contact information for your acts of representative, and that is also available on the CNEs website, also this slide. Um, so with that, we're gonna log off for the day. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, Greg. Thank you again, Michelle.